Dance and movement is a huge part of The Lion King. Not only does it represent the cultural roots of the show's African story, but also the characters themselves and, of course, their actions. Right from the opening sequence of A Circle of Life, the way the characters move around each other is key to our understanding of the story. But how did the creators incorporate it? Let's head on into rehearsals and find out. Four, five, six, seven, eight, and one. Bada, over. Hold on one second, okay? Ha -ha. Hey, Felice. what's happening? All right, how are you? See you. Yeah? I'm all right. Yeah, you good? They look great. You hey, guys they? look great. Aren't they? They're just learning, but they're doing really well. So all is good. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Well, thanks for inviting us in. I'm glad you came. I would love to find out about a little bit more about what you do and how you create Africa through the dancers. Okay. Garth Fagan, as a choreographer, his choreography is very eclectic. Literally, his, his choreography stems from every genre of dance that there is. Ballet, modern, hip-hop, Afro-Caribbean, because he's from Jamaica. What I think so beautiful about it is, is that, you know, the whole circle of life, the whole, it's, it's the world, and Garth's choreography breathes that. It breathes the world. My inspiration for the choreography came from the story just what it was about and that it was set in Africa. Inspiration-wise, I decided that I wanted all the different styles of contemporary dance in the show so all the kids could find something that they knew, something they wanted to know more about, and something that just blew them completely away. So the movement of The Lion King is complicated and very layered because, of course, we have dancers throughout the show, conjuring, if you will, using Julie's beautiful creations, the movement of animals. But then we have pure, proper dance. Garth Fagan created these beautiful, complex dances. We have um, puppets and masks and headdresses that are animals, but you can always see the human face and the human being inside the puppets and whatever. So I had always a double-edged sword, the masks, for the animals and the human face. Think about the lioness hunt, these billowing beautiful silk costumes that kind of conjure the elegance and the strength of how a lioness moves, but also the terror of what they do when they're on the hunt, all told through exquisite choreography. So how does The Lion King's director, Julie Taymor, work with the actors to develop the style of movement that's so unique to the show? You look at a lion, and this is what I would do with an actor who's playing Mufasa, and I say, you know, how are, you, how are we going to get the haunches moving? Isolate it now. And then if you watch animals, you see the kind of click as they look. The ears go up. The isolation. If you watch animals, the precision of, of a deer just stopping, holding it. Mufasa, his mask is a circle, a perfect circle. He is almost like a sun god, so his movement is very symmetrical. He's grounded. For Scar, he's completely asymmetrical. He's very serpentine, he's never really direct, he's a liar, he's always... So the actor looks at the mask that I've created, and they try to find that physicality from the mask in their body. Beyond the principal characters, there are a whole host of other animals brought to the stage using similar theatrical techniques. The cheetah is my favorite of all the creations of all the puppets that we've done. And again, I'm trying to figure out when I'm designing this, where do you put the human being? I had this concept that it would be built off the thighs, the haunches of a real dancer. So if you can just move, move her along, out on a hunt, right, searching, and you spot, it's that frozen moment again. The isolation of your head, her head, and then the control. What did I see, what did I smell? And the connection, the direct connection, right, with the head by using these strings. Again, you're watching a dancer dance simultaneously, the double event, with the cheetah itself moves and attacks, right? Nobody sees it that way. That was a good way to see it right there. <laughs> beautiful. That's beautiful. Meanwhile, I was finding out about Garth Fagan's complex and beautiful choreography the hard way, as Celise continued to put me through my paces. Ready? So you want to go one, two, three, 
for it, Lamar right here. Each single scene choreographically tells a story. With a lioness, they're strong. You know, they're warriors. It's grounded, there's a lot of attack. There's also sensuality into that because they're luring the prey in. You know, you have the hyenas, they're more um, off the street, right? So there's a really a strong, but like a relaxed vibe to them as well, right? Seven, eight, and one, two, three. Simba, on the other hand, his first movement is very all over the place. And you can see as his character evolves, he evolves, his choreography evolves. It evolves into what his father was, which is grounded and strong. All right, here we go, Jasper, thank you. I'll give you five, six, seven, eight. Five, six, he lives in one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, and two, and turn and lunge. Good! <laughs> and you see this throughout the show, the movement of a mask, the movement of a puppet, the movement of a dancer, and then literally beautiful dance choreographed by Garth Fagan. That creates the movement vocabulary that is The Lion King.